And when I try and reconcile how I've cried out to God with then the deafening silence that comes from heaven, at times this has been really disorienting. Do you sometimes feel like your prayers are posted to a non-existent address? I mean, the Bible, it's loaded with these amazing stories of God answering big prayers, right? Like closing the mouths of hungry lions for Daniel. And Jesus even said to his disciples in John 14 that whatever they ask for in his name, he will do. Which is why it then can be confusing when we pray and it seems like nothing happens. And anyone who's been a Christian for more than five minutes or anyone who cried out to God in a moment of desperation has tasted the bitter disappointment and doubt that can accompany unanswered prayers. So how does the Christian story reflect on our experience of a silent heaven? Why doesn't God answer our prayers? Now, I really feel the weight of this question. There are a ton of my own heartfelt prayers that have seemingly gone entirely unanswered. I've seen good friends die to car accidents and from cancer. I've had loved ones stuck with debilitating conditions. And when I try and reconcile how I've cried out to God with then the deafening silence that comes from heaven, at times this has been really disorienting. One of the things that has really helped me in wrestling with these disappointments has been the Bible's honest window into this human experience. Tons of the major players in the Christian story, in the midst of their own dark nights of the soul, have cried out to God without receiving any answer, at least not any answer they were hoping for. And so the Bible gives us permission to ask this question by often giving emotive voice to it, welcoming our lament and inviting us to wrestle with God and the resources of the Christian story in searching for an answer. And while we certainly don't have all the answers, and we need to be really careful not to misdiagnose why heaven may remain silent, and so heap guilt on the heads of those who are already struggling, here are three things that the Christian story does say about why our prayers might seem to go unanswered. First, God might say no because our prayers themselves are flawed. And sometimes what we ask for, it goes against God's stated will. Like when we pray for something bad to happen to someone who made us angry, rather than to bless them like Jesus taught. Sometimes what we ask for isn't good for us. Like how my own three boys asked me to buy for them guns and lightsabers or to feed them ice cream and pizza for breakfast. And as a loving father, I have to say no. And sometimes what we pray for, it puts unfair expectations on God. Like when we may ask God to save a whole tribe of people overnight, which would circumvent God's chosen means of reaching people and violate those people's free agency to reject his invitation. So sometimes our prayers are flawed, which is why in 1 John 5.14, it gives the caveat that it's the prayers that we pray according to God's will that he hears. Second, sometimes the problem isn't the prayer, but the prayer. Psalm 66.18 says that if we cherish sin in our heart, then God doesn't listen to our prayers. James 4.3 says that impure or selfish motives are a reason why we don't get what we ask. 1 Peter 3 says that not respecting our wives, it hinders the prayers of husbands. And Jesus warns repeatedly of the dangers of bitter or unforgiving hearts in his parables, warning that if we do not forgive others, then God may not forgive us. God is not some cosmic vending machine, popping out answers every time we put in a prayer. God's endgame is our holiness in relationship to him, not our material happiness apart from him. Which is why he's committed not to answer the prayers that will keep us from truly knowing him, or that would reinforce within us thoughts and feelings that go against who he created us to be. So sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers because he wants us to keep seeking him, engaging in prayer, not like with requests and a genie, but with the purpose of relationship, inviting us to wrestle with who he really is and what in our life might need to change before we can answer our prayers healthily. The third and finally, things are just way more complex than we realize. Often there's nothing wrong with our prayers and maybe even nothing wrong with us, but there is simply more going on than meets the eye. When Job was questioning God due to a series of tragic events in his own life, God answered by asking a series of 64 questions designed to help Job come to terms with the sheer scale of God's knowledge as the creator who governs creation. As finite creatures limited to the here and now, our perspective is just way too small to know when and how God should answer our prayers. As our infinite creator, however, God can see through space and time. Like Doctor Strange in Marvel's Avengers series, God has the ability to look through the corridors of time to see all possible futures. Meaning only God is in a position to know how saying yes to any sincere prayer right now, even a good godly prayer, might have adverse effects in 50 or 500 years, either for us or others, in how it changes the course of history. 
So sometimes God says no to our prayers or simply not yet, because things are just way more complex than we realize. And as much as God may want to intervene, to do so would inescapably thwart his ultimate end game. That's why when Jesus prays in Gethsemane's garden to escape the suffering of the cross, he serves as the model for how to pray. My father, if it be possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus knows that what we want can come into conflict with what is necessary to happen in order to bring God's endgame about. And so he lays out his request, entrusting himself to the loving will of his heavenly father, come what may. You see, the Christian story teaches that despite how it seems, God does answer all of our prayers, just sometimes not the way we want. Sometimes when our request is wrong, God says no. Sometimes when our hearts are wrong, God says grow. Sometimes when our timing is wrong, God says slow. And sometimes when all is within God's will, that's when God says go. The encouragement in all of this is that we can pray like Jesus, trusting that God knows best how to answer in this crazy and complex world that we inhabit, either bringing his will into the world through our prayers or bringing us and our hearts into alignment with his will through our prayers. So scripture gives us permission to wrestle with unanswered prayer, but it also gives us reasons to trust that God is at work even when heaven seems silent. So if you're struggling to pray because God hasn't come through on something yet, remember, it's only the unuttered prayers that ever truly go unanswered. Dan here from Questioning Christianity. Thanks so much for checking us out. We are all about helping you connect the Christian story to life's deepest questions. So if you're enjoying the content, make sure you subscribe and click the bell on YouTube and then go ahead and follow us on socials.